Hello everyone, this is Jozef Not here and in this video I would like to show you how you can install OpenFoam in both Windows 10 and Ubuntu. Now if you might ask yourself the question, this is Windows 10, how uh, does this show you how to install Ubuntu? Well, first we will install in Windows 10 Ubuntu and then from that point, if you are following along in native Ubuntu, then at this point you can just follow along with my steps and install uh, OpenFoam in native Ubuntu. So I already have a video how you can install OpenFoam natively in Ubuntu and also in Windows 10, but those were, were recorded a couple of years ago, I think the Windows 10 a video was recorded in 2017 and as you can see currently it's now April 2020 and a couple of uh, things changed so I think now it's really time to update those videos. Okay, so now this is for you guys in Windows 10. As you can see, currently I am using a Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation License um, and just to have a fresh Windows here and show you how you can do this from scratch. Okay, so it is very, very simple. We just first have to install Ubuntu and second then open phone. And how to install uh, Ubuntu, uh, we go to the Microsoft Store. Most probably you don't have here an icon, so you can just type in here Store and then you click on the Microsoft Store and then here in the search field you type in Ubuntu and we will go for the LTS version of 18.04. Maybe at la if you're watching this at later time, you can also use 20.04 or 22.04, whenever you're watching it. So the latest LTS uh, uh, version of Ubuntu is the best idea. Of course, you can use this. So I just click here. And then we could now click here on to get, but first there is a, in the description, there is one line which is very important to use this feature. One first needs to use turn Windows features on or off and select Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay, so if you watched my previous uh, Windows 10 video, first we had to develop, uh, to enable the developer mode. This is not the case anymore. In 2020, you can just use this if you want and this does not work with Windows 10 S, but I guess you don't have Windows 10 S. Okay, so now what do we do? Turn Windows features on or off. So I just type here, turn Windows features on or off. I click here and now as it says, we have to look for Windows subsystem for Linux. So I just scroll down here. I click here, click OK. And now this will enable VSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux. And now I have to restart my system and then continue with the installation. So I will now restart this and come back to you once I loaded up Windows again. Okay, so after a quick restart we are back in Windows 10 and now we go back to the store and we again look for Ubuntu. Okay, and now we should be able to click here on to get. Uh, no, thank you. And then install. Okay, I don't need this. Okay, then now uh, the Ubuntu is being downloaded. And let's wait for it to download. So this depends on your internet speed, how fast it is. But you are downloading 258.9 megabytes here. So yes, we are using VSL, there is VSL2. But as far as I know, VSL2 uses 
Microsoft's own Linux uh, version and OpenFoam is pre-compiled for Ubuntu only. So if you really want to use VSL2 instead of VSL1, then you'd have to somehow check out how to compile OpenFoam in VSL2. Okay, pin to start, and that's all we are. We have just installed it. Okay, so this is why we are using VSL1. Okay, now I click here on Ubuntu, and now it is installing. This may take a few minutes. Okay, so this is nothing else than just opening up a terminal in Ubuntu. First, we have to do a couple of steps to install it. So, yeah, let's wait a few minutes until we reach the next step and then I come back. Okay, so we arrived at this point where now I have to enter my username. I usually like to use my standard username here. So, and now I have to enter a password. And your username here doesn't have to match your Windows username and also your password doesn't have to be your Windows password. Now this is completely only for Ubuntu. So I will just type in my, uh, my password and as you can see you don't see anything. This is what you have in Linux. There are no stars uh, appearing at password. It's just blinking, the cursor is blinking but still the password is uh, entered. Now I press enter and I have to retype the password. Press enter and now we have a working Ubuntu here. Um, and now we have everything that we need and uh, what is uh, very good is that we have access to our C drive. So here you, with, uh, with slash MNT and C we can enter here for example the program files and, um, and, uh, and most uh, importantly for users um, and here the downloads. Because now we will download OpenFoam for Windows 10. So we open up your browser. I have only um, the Edge here. So yeah, that's what I have to live with here. So OpenFoam.com. If you go to OpenFoam.com and go here to download Windows 10 native. And now... If you are following along in native Ubuntu, now this is also where you can go and easily download a pre-compiled version of OpenFoam. If you are brave enough, then you can go here to source and then compile it yourself. But the easiest way for Ubuntu and also here in Windows 10 under Ubuntu is to go to this link, download this TGZ file, this tarball and then just extract it and you can use it out of the box. Now if you're watching at a later point, here this link might not be 1912. It could be 2006, 2012 or 22 whatever. So just download the latest version of your current OpenFOAM. And uh, usually in, uh, it's uh, the year 19 and then the month 12 or the year 20 and the month 06. So in December and in June, usually they roll out a new open foam version. So around that time, sometimes this link does not work, but then you just have to wait a couple of days and then uh, recheck again and then just download it. Or what you can also do, so just click here. Uh, let's wait and then here you have this path and all you have to do is if you clicked on to 2006 just modify here the path to version 1912 and then you can download the previous version if the current version is not available yet. Then you can just manually type in this, uh, this path and then modify just the version number and you can just download it. Okay, I accept it. Uh, that's good and nice and now my download should start hopefully okay yeah what do you want to do I want to save it 
Okay, now this will take two minutes, so let's come back when the download finishes. Okay, so the download is about to finish. It is at 97%. So let's wait for it to finish. A couple of seconds remaining. So we've downloaded version uh, 1912. So I, I don't, uh, so, okay, maybe we can view the downloads here. Very good, so it's successfully downloaded. I close this and now if I re uh, use my cursor to uh, and press up, then I can reload my previous command, press enter, and now you see that there is this tgz file. So I can directly um, access my Windows file system from my hidden Linux file system. Okay, no thank you. So I am just going to copy this file to my Linux files from downloads and open phone by pressing by saying CP for copy. I'm just going to make this bigger and okay maybe you don't see a lot so let me just quickly maybe change the font size here to let's see maybe 24. Ah, that's better. I hope you can see now more. Okay, so now we have here this TGZ file. Now we have to extract it. And this is why this is so simple. You just download a TGZ file and you extract it. You can do this here in Windows 10 under Ubuntu in your bash or natively in Ubuntu in your terminal. You type in the command tar and x vf and then you can press tab. Um, so well, what did I do here? Maybe I was a bit too fast. So XVF and then I typed in OP and pressed the, the tabulator and then it will extend the, the entire name of the file. So if we use here XVF then all the extracted um, files will be written out. This is a, can be a lot so I uh, so it is also okay to use a tar and then xf so we extract it uh, this uh, in, into this folder I press enter and now you don't see anything with the additional v so xvf you would now see all the files which are extracted now you don't see anything but this is a bit faster than writing out all the of the files. Okay, so this takes a little bit. I will come back when this extraction step finishes. Okay, so the command finished and now if I type in ls, now we can see that we have now a new folder called open foam. And in open foam we have the actual open foam uh, files and then additional third party files. And in open foam version 1912 we have the open form files you can see we have the tutorials and we have also here in platforms uh, and bin here we have all the executables that we can use to run open foam simulations so for example we have our friend block mesh here we have our friend interfoam here now the only thing is that we have to link all these commands to our Ubuntu <clears throat> and this is one one thing one thing that you have to add into your so-called .bash rc file and this is your line so source slash home um, then your username this is my username open foam open form 12 and then etc and bash rc so this is the line that you have to enter now so what i'm going to do now i'm going to select this line here until the end press the right mouse button this is something like copy uh, so control c in the in the terminal here so um, with control C I can get rid of this command so I don't want to execute it because I want to enter it into a hidden text file now how to open up a hidden text file in Ubuntu and you do this in this terminal in a text editor but this text editor does not have a graphical user interface it is in the terminal itself and this the text editor is called nano 
and we open up the file dot bash rc okay and we press now enter and now you already have a couple of entries here and then here you cannot uh, click with the mouse here you can only use your cursors and go to the very bottom to the very bottom and then if I press enter we can open up a new line and then with the right mouse button we can paste uh, the one line that I just typed in so I, I, uh, I invite you to type in this comma, uh, this line with source and then space and then slash home slash your username not my username and then open form open form minus and then your version if you're watching at a later time and you have a newer version of open form then of course enter the new uh, version number here and etc and bash rc okay so in my previous video i did not uh, have uh, this entry here so I uh, stopped it here uh, we could also just say uh, like uh, use it like this because this sign also uh, uh, replaces the your uh, slash home slash username so it, it doesn't matter you can use that or this approach it's the same and now we have to save it and in my previous Windows 10 this was the most difficult uh, uh, step um, and some of the users um, didn't know how to do it so you press Control and O so like so Control O here uh, here you can see uh, uh, with O you can write out so you press Control and O then here it says file name to write dot bash rc and then you press enter yes and then we exit nano by pressing control x and then if i go go back so i press the up key and then press enter and go down again to the very bottom now it, this line should be in my bash in my bash rc file Okay, so this is important that this is in that file. Otherwise, OpenFoam will not run. So, so all those commands that I showed you before are not linked with uh, Ubuntu. Okay, Control X again. And now, what I'm going to do, we have to uh, enable uh, so, or, or um, restart this bash RC file. Uh, so, we, I'm just going to close my ubuntu my bash here and i'm going to just restart it and now this takes a bit longer and now hopefully so we still have the commands here and now if i type in block mesh and press enter now you can see that there is an open foam header and this is very good version 1912 at later point maybe you have a newer version here and then you have a foam fatal error because we did not set up any case here but this is what we expected here that we get an error message but it is important that this block mesh command from open foam is being started and now we can just go into uh, one of the tutorials here what should we take a look at maybe incompressible and then simple form and what should we take a look at I don't know maybe the pits daily case and now I have to I think uh, type in block mesh now it runs and now if I'm correct I type in simple foam and press enter and now the simulation starts and now you can see it was very simple to install open foam in windows 10 and also in ubuntu in windows 10 we install ubuntu here in, as this terminal and so you don't have to do it in a, um, a native ubuntu all you have to follow along is then down in the second step download this tgz file 
and then just extract it the same way and enter that one line into your bash RC. Don't forget Control O and Control X. So Control O to save it and Control X to exit it and then you are good to go. And now as you can see we finished our simulation results. And very cool thing here in Windows 10 is explorer.exe and then space and then a dot and then this br uh, opens up and now this is a new feature it has been added I think this or last year that you can access your Linux files in your Explorer and then if you have a good text editor you can open up the text files modify them as you want then of course if you have your open.foam file uh, this just creates a new uh, uh, file here. So if I go into Pits Daily, then here we have this open.foam file, and now you can connect this to your Paraview, this .foam ending, and then you can just click it, and then uh, your open form results in uh, your on your Ubuntu file system will be opened up by a native Paraview from Windows. Of course, you can also run your simulations on your Windows file system by going to MMTC and then Users and your username and then Documents. And then here run your simulations in your documents and then you just have to go to your documents and uh, run the simulations there. This is completely up to you. Now as, you, uh, as I showed you, you can both open up files in Linux and Windows. The one thing is that your Linux files are not updated uh, automatically so you have to change well, this is what I did before. So this open.foam file was not rec recognized automatically. I had to go out of that folder and then re-enter it. Okay, so at this point, the only thing that you have to do, but this is just downloading things, google.com and then uh, look for notepad++. If you are, uh, this is a very good, and then download Notepad++. This is a very good uh, text editor to modify your input files. And then the other thing that you need is paraview.org. And then download here the latest version of, and download, download the latest version for Windows here. Um, if you want to use the, Win, uh, the Linux version, then you have to uh, install an additional program called Xming. But for that, I have an additional video with tips for Windows 10. So check out that video. But with your even with your Windows uh, version of Paraview Plus, the Notepad Plus Plus is all you need to set up cases and even run small cases here in Windows 10. If you want to run a uh, um, uh, a, a bigger case uh, for that runs for a longer time, then I would advise you to have uh, a workstation where you have actually a Ubuntu server edition on it, so you don't have a graphical user interface, and then the simulations will be f much, much faster. And here in Windows 10, you can set up your cases, and then you copy your cases and start them on your workstation, or on a cluster of your university or your company, or in the cloud. So this is all you need in 2020 to set up and run open foam simulations relations in Windows 10 and also Ubuntu. So it was in summary it was actually two steps downloading uh, Ubuntu for Windows 10 and downloading OpenForm for Ubuntu. So with that I hope that you liked this video and that you learned something and that you were able to successfully uh, install OpenFoam. The one uh, uh, command is here. Uh, the, the, the most important command is here in this nano.bashrc that you save correctly with Control O and then exit with Control X. This is where uh, some of the users struggle with, but that are the two things downloading Ubuntu, downloading OpenFoam, and that's it. So with that, I would like to thank you for watching and listening, and I hope to see you next time.